What is going on, you guys? I'm Mike of Anabolic Aliens, and today I'm with my buddy Aaron. What's going on, aliens? He's an eye doctor, guys. Not important to this video, but it's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> so, we're actually going to talk about Aaron's intermittent fasting transformation. Now, we are going to mention some facts that go along with intermittent fasting, but I want this video to be very experience based. As you know, guys, I preach a lot from experience. Now, everyone is so different, and science is always changing with a lot of these factors. So, what I like to do is take someone's actual experience because it worked for them, so hopefully, it can work for a bunch of you. So, what I'm going to do is ask him a bunch of questions about intermittent fasting, ones that I want to know, and I'm sure you guys want to know because he's already got me questioning whether to do it for myself or not because he's made such significant progress over a six weeks transitional phase. So let's not waste any more of your time, but real quick before we get into the video, make sure you smash that notification bell next to the subscribe button because you better already be subscribed so you never miss a new video upload from me. All right, let's get into this intermittent fasting transformation video. question is what was your original body weight and your original body fat percentage and then what has it transformed to over the six week period gotcha so when I first started I was sitting at 195 pounds mm -hmm. uh, approximately 16% body fat and uh, now I'm down to 175 pounds just 20 to, pounds yeah lost 20 pounds down to single digit body fat down to about 9% so that's awesome it's like a change of 7% body fat it was unreal I've always been kind of the skinny fat type you know I I would work out, I thought I looked pretty good, but I was definitely storing a lot of fat. Um, and I was never able to really shake that until, uh, until this whole process. So now that we know Aaron made a significant progress change in just a six week transitional period, my question is, what exactly are you attempting to do with intermittent fasting and why did you originally choose to do it? So the goal of intermittent fasting is to kind of manipulate your insulin release so that you become more insulin sensitive. And what that does is it helps you to burn fat off stubborn areas. Okay. For me, it's my abs. I've always been kind of skinny fat, storing a lot of fat here. And um, if you're able to control your insulin release through this intermittent fasting, it really helps you shred through stubborn fat. But one more big purpose about the intermittent fasting is it, uh, it causes your body to produce a ton of human growth hormone, HGH. And that's because when you're fasting, you know, your body's hungry, it's looking for food, your body becomes kind of sympathetic, you know, the flight or, fight or flight response that your body gets. And that causes it to produce a ton of human growth hormone. And that not only helps burn fat, but it'll help you build muscle too. What was your maintenance caloric value and how did you manipulate that while you were doing intermittent fasting? So I used a quick calculator online, found that my maintenance was around 2,800 calories. Mm -hmm. So as most people probably know, in order to you know, lose weight, shred body fat, you have to be in a caloric deficit. And intermittent fasting honestly made that so much easier. So I started off aiming for about 2,200 calories, which is about five, 600 below my maintenance. And when you're fasting, you know, through most of the day and you're eating in just a small window, it becomes incredibly easy to hit your numbers almost effortlessly. So you found it more convenient? Incredibly convenient. Yeah. Yeah. That was so, one of the major perks of it. So what, how did you set it up exactly? What was your intermittent fasting timing? Your fasting timing and then your eating period? So, you know, it's, it's really variable and it depends on what kind of person you are. Um, you know, for me, I like to fast throughout the morning. So I'll wake up, I won't eat, you know, I'll, I'll sip on some black coffee, something that doesn't break my fast, drink water, and then I'll eat at around two o'clock in the afternoon, and then I'm eating from two o'clock on until I go to bed. How long is that eating period for the most part? So I'll eat for about eight hours. Eight hours? Eight hour window or less, and the rest of the day I'm fasting. So you do a 16 hour, eight hour method? Yes, I definitely prefer the, the 16 on, eight off. So are you fasting every day or do you incorporate refeeds or something basically to screw with your insulin levels and your metabolism to keep your body not adapting to it? Yeah, so you know, it, it was an experimental process for me. For the first uh, four weeks, I was fasting every single day, totally consistent, nonstop, um, you know, until I hit my first wall, which will happen with any program, you know? Mm -hmm. You hit a plateau and at that point, you know, I experimented, I did a refeed day. And I found that right after refeeding for two days, I actually uh, got right back into losing fat and losing weight. That's awesome. So you would recommend people not to fast every day? Yeah, I wouldn't do it every day. You know, um, 
and people need cheat days. It's one of the ways to kind of, you know, keep up to stay sane. Yeah, exactly. You know, you drive yourself crazy if you try to just do one thing all the time. So, you know, for some people it works on the weekends, you know, incorporate one or two cheat days and it's not gonna, it's not gonna ruin your progress, you know? It's gonna help your body not get too accustomed to the fasting. What did you typically eat during your eating period? And if you can go even more into detail, carbs, fats, proteins, and how often? Gotcha. So, you know, since it's a cutting program, you know, I want to keep the protein pretty high, keep the fats, you know, relatively high. So I kind of do it if it fits your macros. My protein is about a gram per body weight. My fats are about half a gram per body weight. And I fill in the rest with carbs. You know, carbs aren't the enemy here. You need that energy for the really strong workouts. You know, you still want to be able to work out hard. You want to feel good. Mm -hmm. So I would pretty much do it approximately if it fits your macros. Okay, so since you were eating in an eight hour window, how often are you eating in that eight hour window? So, you know, I'll start off, um, I like to break my fast with something. It's actually pretty important how you break your fast. I use a low glycemic index carb. So that's something like a rice cake, a sweet potato, you can do like an apple, certain fruits. And that's important because you want a slow, steady, consistent insulin release. Since you're so insulin sensitive, you don't want to spike it right off the bat. So I'll start off, eat a rice cake or an apple, wait about half an hour, get a meal in, and then from there, I usually eat about two more meals in that window. So you don't find you're getting way too full in that window? No, you know, and I'm in caloric deficit too. It's actually, I find myself feeling pretty perfect all throughout the, the whole eating window. Now that we know generally how you're eating during your eating period, what are you doing during your fasting period and what technically breaks the fast? So, you know, there's a lot of debate there. Uh, for me, I like to be pretty strict with it. So, you know, I'll wake up, first thing I'll do is grab a cup of black coffee. Um, you know, a lot of people say adding a little bit of cream might, might be okay for not breaking your fast. I prefer to be strict. You know, I'll do black coffee, curves my hunger. Right after that, I'm able to, you know, get a workout in. So, no BCAAs, anything like that. Some people... Why you no know, BCAAs? BCAAs technically cause an insulin release. And the whole goal for me is try to, trying to maintain complete insulin sensitivity for when I do start eating. Mm -hmm. So I don't want any insulin released from my body during that fasting window. So I'll avoid BCAAs, um, you know, some people will do coconut oil, I prefer to avoid that too. Just try to be, you know, really strict with it. I like the black coffee and that's it. Well, water too, of course. Mm -hmm. Definitely feel like you have to load up on the water. Yeah, the water and the black coffee between the two of those, you know, that'll keep the hunger away for those that are worried that, you know, they're just going to be starving the entire time. It really does help curb the hunger. So I guess that brings me into another question. How is your mentality? You're not feeling low energy. You're not feeling hungry all the time. You know, and you kind of have to listen to your body. So usually I feel really great. In fact, if anything, I've had more energy in the mornings. It's, it's been beneficial for me. But you know, any day where I'm feeling a little like flat or weak, and that's something that's gonna happen with a, with a diet or cutting, I'll, I'll you know, incorporate a refeed day where I need it. Mm -hmm. Something to just kind of keep myself mentally strong. Did you find a transitional period, meaning the first week or so you were hating life, you were like, ah crap, I had no energy. Or... <laughs> right, I was worried that would happen, but honestly for me it really didn't. Um, by day two, I was waking up feeling better than normal, honestly. Mm -hmm. I had uh, plenty of energy in the morning. I was up, feeling awake and alert. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend then to basically kind of plan your fasting period around the most busy time of your day? Definitely. It's so easy to fast when you're, you know, when you have a lot of distractions going on. It really makes it effortless. For sure. So when are you working out during the day and what type of workouts are you doing to accompany this type of diet? Gotcha. So I usually work out in the morning in my fasted window. Okay. So when I'm not eating, you know, working out kind of not only distracts me from being hungry, but it kind of curbs my hunger too. When I'm working out, I don't feel hungry. So I'm following a strength program right now okay. because, you know, the whole goal is to not lose any gains or any strength while you're trying to cut fat. Mm -hmm. So I, I follow a strength program and I found that, that really keeps my compound lifts up, keeps my muscle on while, while the fat is just melting off. So I guess that brings me to my next question. How are gains affected? You don't notice any strength gains, or you notice strength gains being lost, or muscle size. Tell mm -hmm. me literally everything about your gains. So, so far I haven't lost any strength. Okay. If anything, a couple lifts have even gone up a little bit. My deadlift's gone up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, my bench has stayed totally stable. I haven't lost any strength there. Uh, in terms of in muscle size, I feel like I haven't lost anything. You know, it's hard to tell because you're losing a little bit of that subcutaneous fat. Yeah, and especially as you get more shredded, the muscle size is going to look bigger because you're more exactly. defined, you know? It's so true. If anything, people have been telling me I've been looking bigger. Mm -hmm. um, so really no loss in terms of gains or strength yet. So my last question is more of giving advice. 
What are your top three do's and your top three don'ts when it comes to in intermittent fasting? Gotcha. I'd say uh, things that's important to really focus on are one, make sure you break your fast properly. So when your body's super insulin sensitive, you don't want to just, you know, you finally hit that eating window, you can finally eat, you're all excited, don't just eat a huge meal, you know, that's gonna, it's gonna be kind of detrimental to the gains. Probably make you feel like crap, dude. Yeah, I won't feel good at all. You want to break your fast properly, like I mentioned earlier. Consistent build up. Definitely. You want that constant insulin release throughout that, that eating window. Um, I would also say it's important to make sure you don't let your body adapt, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't just do the same thing every day, I think it's gonna work. You do need to change it up every once in a while whether that be refeed day, caloric cycling, anything to keep the body guessing. Awesome. And also I'd say just make sure you choose a window that works for you, you know? For some people, you know, not eating in the morning right after you wake up and to start the day is better. Some people, you know, they, they need to start their day with breakfast. So they want to break their fast right away, you know, otherwise they won't feel alive in the morning, they won't feel like a human. And then it's easier for them to just kind of, you know, do it at the end of the day. Whatever works best for you. And your three don'ts. Uh, I would say for the three don'ts. First of all, make sure that you're not doing anything in that window that might release insulin. So some people think it might be okay to do, you know, BCAAs or some coconut oil or something like that in the window. But I would say avoid that entirely. You know, while you're working so hard to make sure that insulin's not released, you know, just do it 100%. The stricter you are, the more maximal results you'll exactly. get from it. Absolutely. Uh, also, I would say, you know, don't overdo the refeed. Sometimes when you're when your body's a little hungry, you just want to go crazy and fill it back up. You know, don't go crazy. You know, if you're doing a refeed day, maybe just eat caloric maintenance, not too much over. You know, mm -hmm. you have to think about it. If you are dieting like that in fast stages and then have that refeed day, if you go overboard, you're gonna feel like crap. <laughs> you're gonna ruin your whole week's progress too. You know, just just you know, uh, a casual refeed day. Hit mm -hmm. your maintenance. Your body will feel good afterward. Awesome. And another pretty easy mistake people could do is training light. You know, a lot of people think they're gonna burn the most the most fat if they're doing like, you know, the, the high rep ranges, mm -hmm. 15 to 20, you know, mm -hmm. you really need to just focus on the compounds. Mm -hmm. So you train sure you heavier, you actually do burn more fat by strength training guys, that's actually a fact. So like Aaron just said, don't do that 15 up endurance type of training if you're trying to really focus on this specific type of dieting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to keep the compounds heavy for sure. Awesome. So I hope you guys liked this video, and if so, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Guys, I have never done intermittent fasting, so big thank you to Aaron for hopping on this video and helping us all out, understanding more about it, and just sharing his experiences, his transformation with it, because as you can clearly see throughout this video, it's been significant, and we want to basically take his experiences, and hopefully they can help a lot of you, you know? Yeah, guys, I mean, it worked wonders for me. I really hope it works for a lot of you willing to try it as well. Get burning that stubborn fat guys with intermittent fasting. He's already got me basically deciding that I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> so, guys, if you haven't already, make sure you download my workout app called Exercise. It is a free download. It can literally generate you thousands of workouts. The app's amazing. Yep, you can that can accompany your intermittent fasting diet. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.